Hey folks, welcome to this week's edition of Brush Pile Fishing. We are back in Mississippi. It is August. We're on what's known as the Arc of Slabs. That's right, that stretch of I-55 in Mississippi with Sardis, Enid, Arcabulla, and Grenada, four of the best crappie lakes in the country. Today we're going to concentrate on Sardis. I have a great guest in store, Charlie Bunning, former national champion as well as national points champion. And we're gonna be using planer boards. So if you've never seen anything like that for crappie fishing, you're in for a treat. So you stay tuned. We'll be right back with Brush Pile Fishing. Many people look at a lake and feel a sense of calm serenity. Crappie fishermen feel the heart pounding anticipation of the thump. That's why host Russ Bailey is addicted to crappie fishing. It's this addiction that takes Russ from the Midwest to the deep south in search of the best lakes, techniques, and patterns from some of the best crappie anglers in the country, right here on Brush Pile Fishing. Hey folks, welcome back to Brush Pile Fishing. We're at Sardis Lake here in Mississippi. It is a hot afternoon here in August. I've got a great guest, Charlie Bunning. Charlie, how are we doing? We're doing great. You know, you've uh, drove camera boat for me when I've taped with Travis, and we've always talked, man, me and you need to get a show. And we wait till it's hot as Dickens out, and we're going to get one here on Sardis. We're going to do it. We're going to be using the planer boards. Can you explain to folks what that is? Yeah, we're actually going to use the uh, the mini planer boards that are going to be they're the smaller ones. It's got a flotation on the top of them that that they just come out with a couple years ago, and we're going to get them out away from the boat, and uh, we're going to catch those fish out 50 foot, 30 to 50 foot on the side of the boat. We know Offshore Tackle, great planer board company. We used to use those for walleye fishing, but now it's really starting to catch on in the crappie world. Yeah, when, in 2012, there's a national championship won with them. And ever since then, everywhere you go, you'll see a few more people using them. They're a great tool, and uh, I don't go anywhere without them in my boat. And hopefully you can explain to the folks at home just how you set them up, and we can see what kind of fish we can get on those. And we're going to do jig fishing with them and not uh, crankbait. Crank bait. Awesome. All right, Charlie, before we get started, Mississippi has some great safety rules with the Corps of Engineers. And actually, on the big four, which is, again, Sardis, Enid, Arcabulla, and Grenada, they actually have a law. You have to have your life jackets on when the motor's running. What do you think about that? I think it ought to be a law everywhere. There's a lot of places that people get killed in, uh, that don't wear them when they should. And you know, these four lakes get so much boat traffic, not just fishermen, but pleasure boaters. I think that's why they enacted this, and they've actually seen drownings go down. I think it's a great plan. I think it goes too. It should be everywhere. You ready to get going? Let's do it. Let's do it. Folks, we're back here in Sardis, Mississippi. End of August, we've got about 85 degree water temperature, so it's still nice and hot. Let me explain to you what we're doing out here. We're at Sardis Lake pulling uh, planer boards, and we're gonna use tadpoles. Uh, what I've done here is I got a tadpole here tied to my main line. When it's diving, fishing, it's going like so, and it's diving, it's pulling down. When you set the hook, it goes here, and then that makes it easier for the line. There's no resistance when you're pulling it in. I've got me a double jig rig going here, and we're pulling a 32nd and an eighth ounce jig. And uh, we're tipping these with a minna, and we're gonna catch us some crappies. And folks, as far as the way we've got these poles set up, our outside pole is running the planer board furthest out. Then we've got the middle pole, which is just in from that one, and our inside pole is up a little bit shallower, closer to us, and that's on the inside. And the reason we do that, when we catch a fish, say it's on this one, we can actually just bring that right around the other two and then start reeling it in. So you don't have a lot of line tangles. We also have a pole set um, directly behind us. There's no planer board on that. It's got the tadpole setting it straight down below the boat. But this makes it so easy that you're not getting tangled up and then you can get right back in the water. Just rotate the poles over if you need to and you're ready to go again. Oh, fish on. I got you. That's 
two quick ones there, Charlie. Oh, that looks like a good one. Come here. Is he? Oh, yeah. Not a monster, but we're just getting started, so. Another white crappie. You know, Charlie, this is a, a great technique. If you've got, you know, your boat makes a lot of sound, or even if you've got super clear water and you want those baits away from the boat, this is going to do it for you. Yeah, and you can let these out as far as you want to go. If you if your fish are being spooked by the trolling motor or being spooked by anything, and a lot of times at fall fishing, them crappie get spooked. Yeah. And if you're in shallow water, what's good about these is you can take shallow water and you can set these that you're fishing three foot deep and push them 60 foot from the boat away from you. Absolutely. And you're able to pick those fish up. I got a bite on three. Yes, you do. I seen that go under. See that fish back there in the back? Yep. It's gonna be a decent crappie. Not too shabby. A little sardis crappie. Stay where you are. More brush pile excitement is coming up. War Eagle Boats, the most versatile line of hunting and fishing aluminum boats available. We strive to overcome real hunting and fishing obstacles, which drives us to create better products in the future. Check out the Blackhawk 2170, the ultimate crappie fishing boat. Built on a 22 degree V-Haul and paired with a 150 horsepower motor, you get lots of space and performance. All War Eagle Boats are built to suit the needs of our customers, guaranteeing you a boat worthy of the investment. Visit WarEagleBoats.com to get your started today. Introducing NKT.TV, a brand new solution for the cord cutting generation. With NKT.TV, viewers enjoy viewer specific programming with the ability to pick and choose the channels you wish to subscribe to. Missed brush pile fishing this week? Catch it on NKT.TV, along with all your other pursuit channel favorites. NKT.TV offers dozens of network and channel options for you, the viewer, to choose from. So go ahead, cut the cord, and get everything you want with nothing you don't. Visit NKT.TV today. Brush Pile Fishing is brought to you by these fine sponsors. B&M Poles, over 70 years of quality and performance. Mustad, best-selling hook on the planet. War Eagle, built for hunters who love to fish. Suzuki, the ultimate four-stroke outboard. Slime Line, catch the fever. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm getting ready to put this board on. I'm twisting the line here. And what that does is I'm gonna put that in here like so. And then I'll bring this back. The back one has a tab on it. And I'll put it under this tab and that way it don't come off. Now what happens is when I get a bite and I pop that, it jerks it out of the front one and it's like the tadpole and it pulls it back easy. Okay. And we're somewhere between 12 and 15 foot deep for this evening bite. This, this morning early, them fish was up about seven foot deep. And as the day went on, they just kept moving down. Charlie, when a fish hits one of these, can you tell the folks what we're looking for with the planer boards? Well, if, if, when a fish first hits it, you're gonna see that planer board is gonna jump. It'll jump back. And then if you don't see that, it, you'll see that if the weight back there will start pulling that planer board back. It's a real good way of covering a lot of water. You're out about probably 40 foot, and I'm probably out 50 foot with my far one. And we're covering 90 foot of water span here. 
folks, we're trolling about one mile an hour. Got a nice little chop on the water tonight, nothing major. Sardis is one of those lakes that was made for flood control and it's ran by the Army Corps of Engineers. And I'll tell you what, they have done a wonderful job, especially with the big four, as they call them down here. Sardis is actually the oldest. It was started in 1936 and completed in 1940. 1940. 1940, it's been here for a while and it's 32,500 acres. That's a whole lot of water. Yes, it is. And you know, you talked earlier that we're covering a lot of water. I can see where someone will be intimidated coming here in the summer. You got all this water, where do you start? Start with your map system. Start with a system like this where you're covering a lot and it helps narrow down quite a bit. What kind of limits do they have down here on Sardis? They got a, a 12 inch length limit. Oh man, that says something right there. Yeah, a 12 inch length limit and then you've got a uh, 15 possession. If you got three people in the boat, then it's a 40 boat possession. Okay, okay. So it does, it says a lot about the fishery here. Yes, it does. All right, let's go. Daddy, where's your life jacket? Yeah, Daddy, where's your life jacket? Oh, thank you, I almost forgot it. I always need to wear my life jacket. Remember, it's always important to wear your life jacket while boating or swimming. Here at the Mississippi Lakes, we have a life jacket policy to keep you and your family safe. So play it safe and wear your life jacket. And remember, life jackets worn, nobody mourns. Now, see how my number three is pulled way back? Yeah. I think it got off because it's starting to come back up. Now it's doing a little jig in there. There's probably a little fish on there or a limb or something. See, it was perfectly in line. It's not dragging like that. It's probably nothing on there. But normally, yeah, it's on there. He's a little better. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now see, I was talking and not watching my line. So when he hit it, I didn't see it. But because of the board not being in line like it was, there's what come out of it. There we go. That might be a better fish. Oh yeah. yeah. Not a hog. I got him. I got him. Not a hog, but he is a nice fish. And Charlie, we've caught all whites. Is that mainly what we have here at Sardis? Yes, that's all I've caught the three days that I've been here. Who decides that? Like I said, you need that net. All you got to do is tell me. There's our first keeper. Look at there, folks. And like I said, I could have got the net for you there, Charlie. Nice fish. That's what we're after. And then again, Russ, look what we caught it on. The mermaid, I'm telling you, great bait. Great bait. Our first keeper of the day. We're going to put her back in and let her grow up. That'll work. Well, Charlie, we just got in town about an hour ago. We've been on the water, caught several fish in that hour, but uh, it's getting a little bit dark. So here's a good thing about TV. We're gonna break for a commercial. And when we come back, we're gonna have supper, a good night's sleep, and we're gonna do a little morning fishing. You ready to take off? Yeah, sunrise will be nice. All right, man, <laughs> we'll do it again tomorrow. Charlie, again, I appreciate you joining us. You bet, I've All enjoyed right. it. Stay where you are. More brush pile excitement is coming up. We put the Rockport Rattler to a real test. Two champion anglers using four rods with the competition jigs against four rods using the Rockport Rattler. The result, the Rockport Rattler outfished the competition 10 to 1. Rockport Rattler, gray head. His patented rattling jig contains a rattling chamber in the body of the jig. The rattle is amplified by using water as a conductor. Rockport Rattler. Making fish hear it at much greater distances. Just like a dinner bell for fish. Look, if you don't have a Rockport Rattler, you ain't catching crappy. Driftmaster Rod Holders. Whether you are pushing, pulling, or organizing, Driftmaster has you covered with products that are made in America. We can rig any boat for any technique from front to back. Driftmaster, for the way you fish. Get ready, get registered, and get qualified for the 2019 Cabela's Crop USA Classic hosted this year on Old Hickory Lake, Gallatin, Tennessee. Crop USA. 
The largest crappie tournament organization in the world is giving you the chance to compete for over $100,000 in cash and prizes, including two Ranger boat packages powered by Mercury and Minn Kota in our amateur and professional divisions. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a beginner, take your fishing to the next level at the Cabela's Crop USA Tournament Classic. BNM Poles. The number one crappie pole company in the world. Whether you are jigging, trolling, pulling, or pushing, BNM has your pole. Third generation family company with over seven years' experience. Home to the Bucks Graphite Jig Pole, the first and best selling graphite jig pole in the U.S. for over 35 years. Visit BNMPoles.com for yours today. This episode of Brush Pile Fishing is brought to you by. Offshore Tackle, Driftmaster, NKT.TV, Crappie USA, Power Pole. Hey folks, welcome back to Brush Pile Fishing. If you just joined us, uh, we had a good night's sleep. It's day two on the water here at Sardis, Mississippi. We're pulling planer boards with my good friend, Charlie Bunning. So uh, let's see what we can do this morning. There we go. Fish on. <laughs> I was watching my planer board and my down rod took off on me. Just getting started here, second morning. That's about a 11 and a half, 12 inch fish right there. Nice healthy fish. And as you can see folks, we've got some waves out here this morning. A big advantage, Charlie, with that tadpole is it's keeping those jigs down where it needs to be and they're not bouncing everywhere. Yes, and same with the planter board. And see how that planter boards are cutting through the water? Yes. They're, uh, they take a lot of that bounce out of there. Oh, I got a fish on. Get on him, Charlie. Here we go, folks. Just on the water, about five minutes. Folks, if you did just join us, we're in Sardis, Mississippi. They actually have a 12-inch limit before you can even keep it dropping. Right Look at there, and that is a nice one. And that 12-inch limit shows a lot about the lakes down here. Look at that, folks. Nice and thick across the back. Look at that. Yeah, this morning we're coming out here and the morning bite and fish move up in the water column. So what I'm doing now is we're fishing about 10 foot deep. I've, uh, I'm setting these where the tadpole is only going about 10 foot. And uh, so far it's been working. Uh, we haven't got all the rods out. We've had three fish on so far. Yep. This evening when it gets, the sun gets on top and then it starts going down, uh, them fish will move all the way down to 15 to 20 foot of water. You know, we've got a bright sunny day they're calling for today and a heat index of 110. So that's definitely gonna push those fish down as we go on. You know, we talk about the difference with last night. It seemed like almost all of our hits came on the outside poles. It was a lot calmer last evening. And I think that's why they had to be out away from the boat. Right now, we've got a lot of waves. So I don't think the fish are quite as spooked. And I think that's what's leading to some of these bites closer to the boat. Oh, what do we got here? Not a bad fish here, Charlie. Yeah, that's a keeper. Look at there. That's a good thick one. That would look good in a frying pan, wouldn't it? It has been a but, good morning bite. But for us in conservation, we're yep. putting her back in the water. Yep. I'm not sure. One. It was pulling back. I've either got a stick or a small fish on it. The way it's pulling, I think it's a small fish. See how it's coming up? Yep. You know, we laugh about you catching that small one, but the thing is, Charlie, we've had fish in a lot of different size ranges, and it shows they've had several good spawns, so the fishing's gonna remain good here for a long time. Oh yeah, the fishing is, it's, we've had fish that was uh, five inches long yeah. up to 16 inches long. That is a good sign. Isn't that a pretty little fish? Now that fish is 11 inches long. You know, folks, we talked earlier about the emphasis that the Corps of Engineers puts on safety down here. They've got a website, it's called pleasewearit.com. Go to that, it's filled with great safety information. Check it out, but right now, stay tuned, because we're going to take a little commercial break. 
Don't go away. More brush pile fishing action is still to come. Welcome to the world of Musthead. Legendary craftsmanship with over 180 years of experience with advanced designs and technology. Mustad is a name you can trust for whatever you fish for. The long trusted classic and big game hooks, the innovative ultra point designs, assortment of tools and jigs or pre-tied rigs and accessories. Quality and durability are built into every Mustad product. Saltwater giants or freshwater trophies make your next trip more memorable with Mustad. For great fishing, check out Grand Lake St. Mary's. Located in West Central Ohio, if you're looking to land bass, catfish, crappie, perch, or bluegill, Grand Lake is the place for you. Check out greatergrandlakeregion.com. Nearly half a million dollars on the line. Oh! And it all comes down to ounces. 1076, Golden Ridge! Don't miss a second of the newest and richest crappie trail in the country. The American Crappie Trail, presented by Lucas Oil. Woo! Watch Pursuit Channel, Fox Sports South and Midwest for all the action. We're ready to go now. The future of oh. crappie fishing is here. The American Crappie Trail. Love it. Living the dream, folks. Living the dream. Your two might have something on it. That's the one that hit a little bit ago. I'll see. Not a bad fish. Come here. And now, the brush pile gear check. This is a brush pile gear check of what we're using today. We're using a B&M bumping catfish rod. Reason we're using this is pulling these planer boards. I want a stiff rod that I can use. A seven foot bumping rod has been the best go-to rod I can find. I'm using a Daiwa counter reel. That way I know if I find these fish uh, 15 foot deep, I use my counter reel to get it down 15 feet. Then we're using high-vis line. Then I'm coming over here and I'm using a tadpole. And we got a paddle fry bait up here on the top with a spinner. And then on the bottom, we got a mermaid. And the planer board we've been using are the mini planer boards with the flotation on the top to keep them up straight. And with these planer boards, you can actually turn them. So they're universal that you can use either one. And that's the gear we were using today. Now, a brush pile tip. Hey folks, so many times we talk about fishing a pattern or a pattern within a pattern. We were using mermaid tails and also these paddle fries, but the last five fish in a row have come off this paddle fry in the same color. It's actually called whatchamacallit. So now, not only do we know what kind of a bait that they want, but the actual color. A lot of times color doesn't matter. Last evening, we were getting them on everything, but right now that sun's coming up. I don't know if it's the way the sun penetrates the water, but that whatchamacallit paddle fry right now is dynamite and it is on fire. There we go. Come to daddy. That is another nice fish, folks. Look at there. Get up here. Oh, yeah. On the paddle fry again. That's the third straight fish on the paddle fry. That is another nice crappie. Sardis, Mississippi, baby. Charlie is getting some equipment rigged up, and I'm taking his side of the boat now. If I was a nice guy, I'd call him up here, but I'm not, not that nice. How's it going back here, Charlie? Looking good, looks like you got a good one. Hey, I come top of the water. Not too bad, if I don't lose him. Another decent fish. Come here, another good fish. There we go. Charlie, as that sun's coming up, the bite is actually getting a lot better right now. Yes, it is. Awesome. There we go. Maybe not. Came on the outside pole. Two, got a double. 
Then don't you lose my two fish, Charlie. There you go. Keep her tight. Thank you. One of them looks good. Oh yeah, look at here, folks. The only double we've had today. And look at that first one. Look at the size difference. We talked, oh my gosh. We talked a little bit ago about, we've caught several different size fish, which is a good sign. Look at the difference between these two right here. Look at that, nice double, only double a day. And, I, and I'll take it, Charlie. You betcha. Look at there, folks. Beautiful fish. That's a good one to close it on. Yeah, that's about probably close to a pound and a quarter crappie. Uh, and on a double, you got a nice uh, 11 inch crappie and a 13 inch crappie on the same, uh, uh, right at the end there. So that was, uh, that was good. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed today's show and you learned a little bit about planer boards. Charlie, it's been a while getting a show together with you, but we finally got her and it was a good one, bud. So folks, I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned, because we'll be back next week with brush pile fishing. For more brush pile fishing excitement, find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.